so the artist in residence program started here in September of 2020 so right in the midst of the pandemic and it was created to really create a space to uplift artists that were traditionally and historically overlooked by the art world um, that have been marginalized and so it was a partnership between the Westmoreland Museum of American Art and Boom Concepts in Pittsburgh and Boom was able to help identify different artists that we could work with. Um, it's been a really amazing project and we've had five different artists um, in this two-year program and Janelle was the final artist and uh, she had a seven-month residency here in 2022. We were excited to connect with Janelle. She's done amazing public art across Pittsburgh and across our region and it was just an honor to welcome her into the program this year. When D.S. Kendall from Boom reached out to me and said, hey, we might have an opportunity for you. We would like the folks from the Westmoreland Museum to come and see your work in, in Pittsburgh. It's funny because people often say like, oh, let's do a studio visit. And I'm like, guys, all of my work is like outside in the world. So <laughs> I don't really have a studio that has work in it. <laughs> Our former director, Ann Craybell, and I went down to Pittsburgh. We met Diaz and Janelle down at Wood Street in late July of 2021. And she had projects all over the city. <laughs> um, so what we ended up doing was going on like a private walking tour of all my murals in downtown Pittsburgh, which was really fun. I was able to talk to Erica and Anne about my work and the different murals, the inspiration behind them, how I collaborated with different communities to make them happen. And then, um, then I was invited to a site visit out here in Greensburg, showed me around the museum, the studio space, um, the town, everything. Went on a walking tour here and it's so peaceful and nice. And I got to talk to the previous artists as well and their experience. So it's been a really exciting time um, to kind of like step into a new space and kind of expand my artist practice and what I want to do and be able to experiment a little bit without all the pressure of like what the end product is going to be. I was approaching it like most other projects where I'm like, yes, and I can do this and this and this and this. But then, you know, the people at the museum kindly remind me like, that's amazing and wonderful if you want to do all that, but you don't have to. And I think I was telling my mom the other day, I was like, I think I should not try to boil the ocean while I'm here. Like I should enjoy the freedom that I have and do what feels more natural. I'm a community artist, so I get to work directly with communities and talking to different people, whether it's kids or the elders or, you know, people who just have like deep-rooted history in a community or they just know a lot, they have so much knowledge. Um, I get to incorporate all that stuff into my work just by having conversations and discussions and they want to learn about me and I want to learn about them. So that is one of my favorite, one of my favorite things. Cause then it shows up like however it wants to in my work. The hardest thing in the world to do is like make your bio a hundred words or whatever they ask you to do. <laughs> um, I feel like there's so much to who I am just as a person and then as an artist too, but I go by JY Originals, but I welcome people to call me by my real name, Janelle. And I'm primarily a painter and a muralist. And um, I am a community artist. So I've done artist residencies with nonprofits. I've done residencies in schools, um, different things like that, where I get a chance to really talk to different community members. Um, and the work that I do is primarily public art at this point. I also do some merchandise, um, such as my coloring book called Color Your Crown that focuses on natural hairstyles. I have been the resident artist at this museum for the past seven months. Um, I've had a studio on the second floor I've been able to work out of, and this program is like the first program I knew I wanted to do at the museum, even though I've been doing programming the, the whole time I was here. 
This was the first thing I said, I need to do a coloring party because I have a coloring book that I illustrated, Color Your Crown. I'll tell you a little bit, of, a little bit more about the background of that. But um, I've taken this coloring book to a few different cities um, and we've had wonderful donators um, and sponsors for these types of events um, so that we can provide these books to our attendees for free. So thank you to everyone who registered and was able to grab a book. I hope you share your favorite page before this is all over with. Um, but for this event, the museum as well as Macy's at the Westmoreland Museum and uh, the Black Unicorn Library and Archives Project all were sponsors so that we could give these books away today. I really enjoyed just hanging out in Greensburg, meeting the people, so I definitely want to get a chance to talk to everyone here. And I also will be doing a mural this week, um, a, just a few minutes down the road here in Greensburg, about this coloring book. Um, I created this in the year 2020. It was during the pandemic. I have a series called the Black Girl Magic series. It's really just a celebration of natural hair and different styles that people can wear, different things like that. I had a lot of people who typically buy my prints ask me, where is the coloring book? <laughs> and I kept saying, do people need a coloring book? Do people need a coloring book? I don't know, I don't know. I've created calendars. I've created prints, I've created all kinds of other merchandise from this series, but I finally decided to go ahead and make the coloring book since I had so much downtime during the pandemic. And it was a hit, you know, I think, you know, having the affirmations in there um, where just all ages can kind of connect and talk about those different things. Also having the inspiration page at the very beginning, I hope you guys do fill that part out. Um, it's just a fun way to kind of Think about what makes you happy, what brings you joy, because that's what I try to do with my artwork. Do any of the adults over here just want some coloring pages from the museum? So that, yes, yes. Free throw that all out, or are you just kind of doing it as you go? Um, there's a short answer and a long answer. Are any of you like creative in any other way too? I like to pretend like. I tell people everybody's creative. It just comes out in different ways. Mine just happens to be art. But I like that page because it reminds you that you don't always have to be doing something to feel like you are somebody, right? Like nothing blooms all year round. It's okay to take a rest, to chill out, you know, like relax like we're doing today. Yes, this is my mom. Nice to meet you all. So, yes, again, we're going to talk a little bit about the pillows shortly. It was actually a collaboration with my mom to do all the pillows. Are you an artist too? I am not. I'm an educator. I'm a professor at the community college. That's how I started doing workshops, I guess. <laughs> she said, we should do a collaboration. And I said, how about the mantras from the book? And so, and what we did was, we wanted to support a local business here in Westmoreland, and they're the ones that printed on, on the material for me. So I wanted to help with small business and collaborate that way. So what do you sew? Whatever I ask her to sew. That is true. What inspires you? She inspires me to continue to do my best work, because she does her best work. She is your best friend. Yeah. I will agree. I will agree. I like that. I'm going to get a shirt that says that right there. With the work that I do, I see kids being able to discover a little bit more about themselves, learn a little bit more about art and how it can look. Because a lot of kids, if you ask them what, what a mural is, they have no idea what you're talking about. You say those giant paintings on the side of buildings, and you're like, oh. Um, so it's just like small things like that, just exposing them to things that maybe they didn't know what they were called, or they had no idea who does stuff like that. Like, who's the type of person who paints a whole street? Like, you don't know. And I'm also like an artist advocate, so I've been on the Art Commission for the City of Pittsburgh. I've held workshops. Um, panels and things like that. I'm like on panels for speaking as an artist, but I'm also on panels for helping choose artists for public art projects so that I can really advocate for what the artist who's being chosen, like what do they need in the process and also helping 
people and institutions see the inequities that exist um, in the art space, especially the public art space. I'm a huge advocate for black and brown artists taking up space. This week I've been working on a mural in Greensburg. It's at the Laurel Highlands Workforce Opportunity Center. I did some community engagement here with the students at the center to talk about what inspires them, to talk about the challenges that they've had to overcome and why they are in the program here and how they got involved. Engaging with them was really great. They were an awesome group of young ladies to talk to and they all had really different stories and journeys but all with the same theme of wanting better, wanting to feel supported and uplifted and I was able to create a design that reflected that in my work. So I titled this piece um, The Way Up and I wanted it to reflect the stories uh, that were told during the discussion and the community engagement that we had. And so, of course, it's a mix of my geometric uh, inspiration that I use in a lot of my work, as well as my color blending that I use in a lot of my work. Um, but I wanted to evoke the feelings of celebration, pride, motivation, warmth, support, upward motion. Um, it's funny because I'm usually known for like my triangles that symbolize community and tribes, but I thought that something more fluid was better this time because I wanted to show that success is not linear. It's not a straight line. You're gonna have dips and curves and loops and all of those things. And then at each curve, you'll see there are kind of like some supporting lines. And to me, that was like Laurel Highlands, uh, and the, the staff here supporting at every one of those twists and turns that the students are gonna come across during their journey. And I thought it was amazing during our conversation that we were able to just hear them talk about how they know for a fact, even after they leave the program and you know they're, they're moving on with their lives, that they can always come back here for support. And I thought that was amazing. Um, so I wanted to make sure that that was incorporated and I also have some detail work that will be going into it that is kind of some symbolism for how they're moving upward. And the name of this piece is going to be The Way Up. I wanted to create a lot of movement throughout the piece, definitely going upward because everyone here is looking forward to what they can do with their fresh start that they received here at Laurel Highlands. And so I thought that was really great inspiration for me as an artist. And I used a lot of curved lines, um, almost as if they're floating upwards. And so I'm gonna be incorporating those to draw the eye from the ground to the top of the tower that I'm painting. Something that the ladies here had me realize as far as the title of the piece is just, what are we all doing to reach our full potential? And so as an artist, I'm always trying to put my best foot forward at the same time, continuing to challenge myself, whether that's with the materials, with the design or both, um, in order to grow for myself, for my practice, and just be able to reflect other people in a multitude of ways and not just one singular way. I always want people to get joy from my work or some form of healing, understanding, or spark a conversation. And I've been able to get great reactions from people of all ages, kids, adults, everyone in between. And um, recently at the museum, we did a coloring book party featuring my coloring book and I had a screen with just videos playing for my YouTube channel of other murals and work that I've done. And one of the kids, one of the little boys at the workshop recognized some of the murals and recognized my work. And he was like, we've been there, mom. And I thought that was the coolest thing. Like I love when kids react to my work because it's just the purest form of <laughs> emotion, <laughs> no matter what it is, if they love it or hate it or whatever it is, 
they're going to be really honest with you and truthful. Um, so it was awesome to see that he was excited about seeing my work and the colors and sparking that joy for just at least one person. It was so cool. At Bloom Concepts, we were really excited to work with Janelle. As a curator, she has work that I have been eyeing for a very long time. It's been amazing to see her growth, um, and it's been exponential growth over the past two or three years even. So to see the amount of corporate partnerships, community partnerships, and just how large her practice has gotten is not only inspiring, but it's something that we wanted to make sure we included in our programs for Bloom Concepts. So shout out to Westmoreland uh, for giving us an amazing partnership and program, and shout out to Janelle for being an amazing artist. What I would say to any artist who is, you know, coming up or emerging right now is take every learning experience and lesson you can and turn it into your next greatest thing. Um, nothing's ever going to be perfect. We try really hard. Some of us are perfectionists when it comes to our craft, but you got to learn how to adapt and, and work with what you have who you have in the room, what materials are available, and make it beautiful, because that's our jobs, right? Get out there and inspire through creativity and play.